about how great God is and how great his mercy is towards us, sometimes we can get in this mode where we just sing these words and not think about what they mean. And, and I don't want us to ever be like that. I don't want new creation to ever get to that point where we get so callous that we don't even think about how good God has been to us. Um, really, truly reflect on what he did on the cross for us. Truly reflect on that could have been, should have been us that died on it. The words of great is thy faithfulness towards me mean something different. When you think about what he has brought you through, think about how good he's been and his mercy towards us, that he doesn't deal with us the way he should deal with us, but he deals with us with mercy and tenderness and love. I just thank you, praise team, for that reminder. Thank you, John Bray, for the communion, uh, leading communion this morning. Um, sorry. Good morning, new creation. <laughs> Um, it is good to be here this morning. I uh, thank you for getting up early, a little bit earlier than maybe some of y'all are used to, but getting here for service today at 930. Um, got a couple of announcements. Uh, first, want to, um, to ask for prayer for Sister Mary Jones. Sister Mary Jones is in the hospital right now. She has... Um, had a stomach aneurysm, and she has to get stents put into her heart. She said she was just going to the doctor for a doctor's visit and ended up in the intensive care. And, and thank, let's thank God that she was able to, to get there in time. And um, many of you may not know Sister Mary Jones. She was one of our charter members. She's been a member of this church since it began. Um, because of health, she hasn't been back in a few years. But... Uh, we want to continue to pray for her. And then we also want to pray for Chris Hall's neighbor, a uh, young man, about, what, 10, you say, Chris? He, he got hit by a car. He's four? Wow. Uh, four years old, got hit by a car, and, and unfortunately, Chris um, and Johnny got a chance to witness it. They saw it happen. Um, and so he's doing better. Um, he's, they had to, he had a broken leg, um, they had to reset his nose, um, and then he has a big gash on his forehead, but just be in prayer for Chris and Tanya's neighbor. Um, and then the other announcement I have is, um, our church anniversary, this coming July 31st, July 31st, we'll have our church anniversary, same time, 930, here at the church, the day before. On July 30th, July 30th, we'll have an anniversary cookout, and we would love to host all of you at our home, me and Ladidra's home. So um, we will give more details about the anniversary cookout, especially what time, but just block out time on your calendar. It's going to be in the afternoon, early evening. Um, I want you to invite your family, your friends, your neighbors, to the anniversary cookout, to the, to the service. We'll have um, activities for the kids. Uh, and because it's summer and it's July, we, it'll be a water activity. We'll have some kind of water activities for the kids. Um, and then we'll have food. You know how we do new creation. We'll have plenty of food for everyone. So, so just come, come ready to hang out, enjoy some time together, just have fellowship. Um, so that's July 30th. Uh, so now y'all know, I've been talking about this for a while. But on yesterday, <laughs> the men of new creation got to go fishing. And I'm, I'm just going to put it out there like this, Bobby. I caught the second most fish. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm not going to say who else was there. There's me. You, you got to kind of zoom in to the, to the fish, but it's up there. It's right there by the chair. It was about, about this, about, about a catfish about this long. Pastor Miles taught me. He was showing me how to do it. Chris was showing me how to do it. I, I kind of got a hang of it. But uh, Pastor Miles had already caught two. And he said, I'm going to put you right here in this spot. And, and, and he, he showed me where to go and throw it. And I, I was able to catch my first fish, my first time fishing. So, so 
Um, it was it was fun. It was a blast. The um, the fish it, it's it's a nice. It was shaded. It was it was just a good time. We we were able to have. Now I know there's a lot of women here that fish. We were gonna go back to that place. We we're, we're trying to figure out when and where and how to do it. But we are going to go back, and it's gonna be a church wide thing. Men and women, if you fish, you don't fish. It was just fun to be out there. It wasn't hot. It was, it was like I said, it was nice and shaded. Um, just, I, I just got to gotta get your hands dirty. That's, I, I realized that. Didn't have my little towel to wipe my hands with, so, so my clothes got a little dirty. But other than that, it was great. Um, but um, I'm, not going, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm Pastor Miles, I'm not going to say who else was there and that did not catch any fish. But um, I did, and, and Chris came in the morning and said, said I know you're going to be bragging. I'm, <laughs> listen, I, you know, I, the, the student became the teacher. <laughs> the student learned well, and, and it was fun. I, I, I got I to get my own fishing rod. John Bray was able to stop by. He didn't get a chance to fish. He had to actually go to work, but he stopped by. He was even showing me, you got to do like this. You got to do like this. Um, but it was just a great time, and I hope to do. Hope we can do this again. I want to do more activities like that, more things as a church family. We can spend more time together outside of these four walls, and just have a good time with each other. Um, where's my little buddy, Romani? Come up here. I know he's been waiting. Right, come here. I got some awards from Romani for his school year, and I am so excited about this, Romani. Uh, Tur Turner. It says, congratulations, Romani Turner. You are a sight word superstar. You read 60 out of 60 sight words. Good job. That's his first award. And this next one, it says, this certificate is awarded to Romani Turner, the top map score for math for Martin Elementary. So good job. We got a read a math award and a reading award. Good job, bro, Romani. Um, you are awesome, doing good job, good work. And Romani was so excited about his awards, and I, I couldn't help have to acknowledge him. He's such an old man in a young man's body. <laughs> uh, and he is so, so smart, diligent, and we just want to pour into him and just encourage him as he does so well in school. Uh, with that, any other, I, I don't have any, I didn't have any um, birthdays or anniversaries. Anybody celebrating a birthday? I just had my anniversary today. I didn't know it was coming. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is awesome. Happy anniversary. <laughs> Ten years. <laughs> Ten years. Tammy and uh, Leroy. I was about to call him his nickname. I had to stop myself. <laughs> brother Leroy and Brother Tammy celebrating 10 years of marriage. Congratulations uh, on your anniversary. Well, with that, we'll turn it over to. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Sister Jolene. Well, I was about to say, uh, thanks for all the stuff that I like always do on today. My granddaughter, I don't even know what she is. Doing and she's cute and she's a little. You're welcome. Welcome. Your uh, what's her name? Your granddaughter? Shirley. Shirley, and she celebrated her birthday on yesterday. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. That is good to hear. Uh, any other prayer requests or any uh, anything else that we can we can jot down? We won't pray for them here, but we'll we'll definitely take them down and have pray for them. Yes. Just try to bless everybody, the whole city. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sister Nikki. Y'all going international. Y'all traveling international. Uh-oh. Y'all ready? You taking Tammy International? Yeah. <laughs> Where are y'all going? Awesome. Awesome. Get Brother Chris. Amen. Will do. Praying for Tanya's mom. She, 
she's uh, doing better. Doing good. That's awesome. She's here local. Um, any other prayer requests? Oh, yes, yes. Thank you for reminding me. Sister Dottie's home. Yay. Amen. She, she did what she said. She was checking out Friday, and she checked out Friday. <laughs> and, uh, and then pray for Brother Miles' daughter. She was in a really bad car accident. Um, and Pastor Miles was hoping that Tiffany, his daughter, could be able to help with Dottie, but now he's taking care of two patients. <laughs> so let's pray for Pastor Miles as he takes care of two patients. But um, pray for Tiffany specifically. She was in a serious car accident, um, walked away with just a broken rib. Uh, but if you see the car, man, it, 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 it was a severe accident. And so just thank God for his grace and his mercy to spare her life, but then also um, for the grace and mercy Pastor Miles will need to, to be able to take care of his two patients. Sister Tammy. We're gonna pray. We're gonna pray God's will <laughs> on the uh, Sister Tammy's. <laughs> Sister Tammy, we're gonna pray for for some peace for Sister Tammy as her grandson has a motorcycle, and she wants it to break down. <laughs> I love it. Yes, sir, and and so that he can get a car. I love it. I love the honesty. Uh, but let's, um, let's, just, let's pray right now. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day, and we thank you for all these prayer requests. Lord, we pray for Sister Mary Jones, who is in the hospital, who is um, awaiting to have surgery, um, but has to wait until the infection clears. Lord, just be with her. Touch her body. Touch um, the doctors and give them wisdom on how to treat her. And, Lord, we know that ultimately you are the giver of life, and you're the sustainer of life. And so that we, we put her in your hands, that you will do as you see fit and, and, and bless her as you deem necessary. Lord, we pray for all of the prayer requests. We pray for Tiffany Miles and Dottie Miles, who, Sister Dottie Miles on her recovery, both of them on the recovery, um, pray for uh, healing, that they will continue to heal and continue to get stronger for Tiffany, who has broken ribs. Lord, pray for the um, swift healing, that she can um, get back to normal activities. Um, we thank you for sparing her life in, in such a serious accident. Um, and then we pray for Sister Tammy, who grandson who has a motorcycle. Lord, we pray that you just protect him. Um, we pray that your will be done in that situation. And Sister Tammy wants that motorcycle to break down so he can get a car, Lord, but we know that you are the ultimate protector. You will provide and you will uh, guide and, and lead him, Lord. So we pray that you just give Tammy peace of mind. Uh, we pray for Tammy and Nikki who are traveling internationally, Lord. We pray that you just be with them as they travel um, overseas. And Lord, we pray for Sister Tanya and Chris's mom, Lord. We pray that you just continue to heal her and strengthen her body. Lord, help. Um, we thank you that she's here in the Metro Place so it's easier for Tanya to get to her, Lord. But we um, know that she still has some recovery to do. So, Lord, we pray that you just be with her. And, Lord, all of the prayer requests that are here that, that were spoken and unspoken, Lord, that I may overlook the miss, Lord, we know that you don't miss anything. You hear it all. You know it all. So, Lord, we pray now for the, those prayer requests. Lord, comfort the, the, the requester. And, Lord, we pray for those who are in need of your intervention. Lord, we ask now that you just have your way in each and every one of our lives. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Um, it's now time for our offering. Our ushers will be directing us and leading us. If they're, hopefully on the screen, you can see all the different ways to give. Um, some of this information may be changing soon. The cash out won't, but... Uh, the, the online giving, we, have, we, have, we are in the process of transitioning church management software. Uh, so what that means is there'll be a new website, uh, a new site that you can go to that uh, you can 
pay online or give online, I shouldn't say pay, uh, give online, and but it will still be through our website, but it'll be linked to that, and then there'll be a, probably a new phone number to text if you decide to go that route. Uh, but be on the lookout for that. We'll be we'll be sharing that here in the next in the next com coming weeks. We're still in the process of transitioning all of that stuff over from we you know we used to use Breeze, where uh, we're using a, a system that's more powerful, has more capability, and here's the great thing: cheaper. So it, it is cheaper for the church overall. Uh, it, so we are we're excited about this new software. Um, and what it will do for us. And with that, I'll turn it over to our usher. creation we uh, I wanted to begin with a quote um, it comes from Voltaire Voltaire is a French writer and philosopher in the 15th 16th 17th century and he says if God created us in his own image we have more than reciprocated. Uh, we have more than reciprocated. In other words, in other words, God created us in his image. We have done a job to make him like us. Uh, I, I, I'm reading this book called Gentle and Lowly. Just finished it by Dan Ortolan. And it says, the message of this book is that we tend to project our natural expectations about who God is onto him instead of fighting to let the Bible surprise us in what God himself says. And let me read it again. It says, it says, the message of this book is that we tend to project our natural expectations about who God is onto him instead of instead of fighting to let the Bible surprise us into what God himself says. How do we view God? How, how do you view God? How, how, what, do you, what do you think about when I say God the Father? A lot of us have different views of who God is. Uh, oh, we come with 
ideas of who God is and how God should act or what God should do. Uh, uh, some of us, we just think of God as a loving God, that he's going to just give us all that we want, all that we ask for. We, we think of him as a loving God. Some of us think of him as a vengeful God, sinners in the hands of an angry God. We, we, we have this idea that when we mess up, God is going to come down on us and, 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 and bring his wrath and punish us. And a lot of this has to do with how we were raised and what we grew up under and, and, and a lot of the legalism sometimes in the churches we grew up in. And we come to God with those same ideas and views. Some of us think God is just a grandfather. He's going to give you everything you want. With no discipline, no, no, no consequence, you can live and do whatever you want. God's just going to give it to you. I'm, look, I, I'm looking cross-eyed at some of you grandparents in here. Y'all created this narrative that I don't like because my kids think that when they go to their grandparents, they can get whatever they want. And, 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 and I can't wait till I'm a grandparent because I'm going to do it too. I'm going to spoil them. And I'm going to send them back to their parents. And, 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 and we, but we come to God like that. We come to God thinking that God's going to spoil us and give us whatever we want. And then he's going to just let us do whatever we want. We all bring these ideas. Some of us think God is petty like us. Tit for tat. You do something against me, I'm going to do something against you. You, you. you commit a sin, I'm going to punish you immediately. And oh, it was nice if punishment was just like that. But in Isaiah chapter 55, I want us to do like the author said. I want to allow the Bible to speak to who God is. You probably are going to recognize part of this chapter, but I'm going to start at verse 1, if you don't mind. While you're turning there, let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you. We thank you that you are allowing us to come and learn more about who you are. Lord, I'm a firm believer is if we know who you are, it will dictate how we act. And how we live. If we understand who you truly are, as the Bible teaches us, then, then it will change the way we live. So, Lord, I ask now that you just open our hearts and our minds. Open our eyes to see what your word says about who you are. Lord, and we will let us receive it. Let, us, let it fall on good soil and we'll give you all the honor, glory, and praise. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 1, it says, Come, all who are thirsty, come to the waters, and you have no money. Come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread and your labor on what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me and eat what is good and you will delight in the richest affair. Uh, uh, Isaiah 55 is Hebrew poetry. Um, and not to get into a lot of detail about Hebrew poetry, uh, but one of the things is the symbolism here. Uh, um, this is a call to come to God. It, it's a call. It, you see it in verse 1. It's, it has four times. It says, come, come. All who are thirsty, come to the waters, and you have no, and you who have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Now, uh, in other words, the, the, the Isaiah is writing this Hebrew poetry, it, and, and he's inviting the reader to come to him, come to God, and, and, and come experience salvation because it's free. You, you see, it says, come who are thirsty, come to the waters. Those of you who have no money, it, you, we can't buy salvation. You can't earn it. It says, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without cost. The, the second part where it says, buy wine and milk, that was, that was a, a, an extravagance, an indulgence. It, it was to show abundance. It was a symbol of abundance. So, so when the... Isaiah is writing this. We have to think about how the original 
readers would have understood this, and they would have understood this as salvation from God. And not just any salvation, free salvation. Because they didn't have any money to buy, they didn't have anything, and then it would have, they would have recognized the wine and the milk, and they would have understood that as abundance and, and known that he's just not asking us to come to him, and he's going to get us by just barely. Our salvation isn't just going to be on, on meager means. It, it, he has an abundance waiting for us. And it says, why spend money on what is not bread and your labor on what does not satisfy? Can I, can I modernize this part right here? Why are we doing all this other stuff to try and gain things that don't matter in this life? We, we, we will... We will work 24-7 if we could to try and get money, to live a life, and then have, not have time to live the life. We will do all these things to, to try and become wealthy, and, 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 and we don't have the time to even enjoy the money. I know people that work overtime and overtime and overtime to get all this money, but then when they get home, all they do is sleep. It says, why spend money on what is not bread? And your labor on what does not satisfy? See, we think that if we get, then we'll be more comfortable. And, and truth be told, people who have the most money are the most miserable. The people who have it all are alone and lonely and, 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 and are in, in, in a sad space because they don't have anybody to share it with. All these actors and these people that we see on TV are miserable. They may portray a life, but they're miserable. Talk to, the, talk to their, their help. Talk to their maids, their servants, their chefs, and ask them how they truly are. And they'll tell you that they, they're just sad people. It, it says, why spend money on what is not bread and on labor on what is not satisfied? Listen, listen to me, and eat what is good. And you will delight in the riches of God. Come to God. It's an invitation. And then that's why I titled this message, The Great Invitation. It, it's an invitation to come to him and to experience his salvation. Verse 3, it says, give ear and come to me. Listen that you may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you. My faithful love promised to David. See, I have made him a witness to the peoples, a ruler and a commander of the people. Surely you will summon nations you know not, and nations you do not know will come running to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has endowed you with splendor. The verse 3 says, give ear and come to me. Listen up. Can I, let me change it up. Listen up. Come here, come here, come here. Listen up. He says, I will make an everlasting covenant with you. My faithful love promised to David. What is he saying? It, this faithful love or this everlasting love is a loyal love that he had for David. He says, I'm going to love you the same way and have an everlasting covenant, a covenant that will not end, a covenant that will not go away. He says, I will have an everlasting covenant with you. Some of your versions might have. Meaning, our salvation is forever. When we come to him, we come to him forever. He, our, our relationship with him is forever. And, and so when it says he will make an everlasting covenant with us, he's, he's saying in the same way he made an everlasting covenant with David, he making an everlasting covenant with us. You know the covenant he made with David that somebody would always sit on the throne of David for all of eternity. We, we see that fulfilled in Jesus Christ. And in the same way, Jesus fulfilled that covenant. This everlasting covenant is also built by Jesus Christ. It's, it's a faithful that we place our faith in him, and we can never lose our salvation. It says faithful love. And then verse 4 says, see, I have made him a witness to the peoples, a ruler and a commander of the people. And In verse 4 and 5, the, the tent switch or the, the, the point of view switches. And when we see you, he's talking about Israel. And when we see him, he's talking about Israel the Messiah. This is, this is prophetic talking about the Messiah. It says, see, I have made him a witness to the people. It's meaning the Messiah, a, a ruler and a commander of the people. Surely you, meaning Israel, will summon nations 
you know not, and nations you do not know will come running to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has endowed you with splendor. In other words, God has blessed Israel through Jesus Christ with splendor and with holiness. Verse 6, it says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on them and to our God for he will freely pardon. Verse 6 says, come, seek the Lord, sorry, while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Seek the Lord. The Hebrew writer here is, is, is again, using his poetry to, to illustrate a point. It says, there's a window. See, we don't like to think about this, but there's a, there's a, 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 a pointed amount of time where we can seek the Lord. That, that, that time is going to come to a close. At some point, it's going to come to a close. We don't, we're not going to have all of eternity to seek God or to, to come to God. It says, you, you've heard it, it says, salvation is now. Salvation is now. We Don't harden your heart. You can have salvation right now. This is what he's saying. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Now, for some of us biblical scholars in this room, this might seem contrary to what, what the Bible says. No one seeks after God. And, and it's true. Nobody can seek after God. God is the one pursuing us. God is always pursuing us. But there's going to come a time where the Holy Spirit is going to stop pursuing. There, there, there's going to come a time where not per, stop pursuing. He's going to continue to pursue. But we've said no so much. We stop listening, stop seeing, stop hearing all of the times where he's coming after us. But we have a part to play. It says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he's near. Let the wicked forsake their ways. Let the wicked turn away from their ways and the unrighteous, their thoughts. Meaning we have to change the way we live our lives. There's a repentance element to this. We, we don't, I, I heard a preacher say, he says, we can come to God as we are. But when we leave, we can't leave the same. See, God wants us to come to him as he is, as we are. We, he doesn't want you to come thinking that you have to perform to be accepted by him. He wants you to come as you are. But when we come to Jesus and when we give our lives to him, when we experience that life-changing love, we can't leave the same way. It says, let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Verse 7 says, let them turn to the Lord, and he will have mercy on them. And to our God, for he will freely pardon. He's saying God is, when we turn to God, God, I, man, I couldn't have planned this better. The song that we sang this morning, great is thy mercy towards us. Great is thy faithfulness to us. Look, look what it says. It says, let us turn to him and he will have mercy on them. Mercy meaning not getting what we deserve. And in and, 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 and a bit of Hebrew poetry, there's a parallelism going on here. The first part says that he will have mercy on us. And then the second part of the verse shows us how. He says, for he will freely pardon. Uh, uh, in other words, some of your versions have, he will abundantly pardon. I, I, I like that word more. It, meaning that when we come to him, he's going to forgive us. The, we, we see that in the New Testament. It says, if we are faithful and just, he will forgive us for all our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He will freely pardon us. And then verse 8 says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, 
Neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As high as the heaven, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. See, I would always quote this, and, and I've, I've quoted this scripture a lot, and I'm a, I'm, I got a confession to make. I've been quoting it incorrectly. It, it, does, it does show how much different God is from us. It, it does talk about how much God is greater than us. That This idea of as high as the heavens are above the earth is, is this idea of spatial infinity. That's what the Hebrews would, would, would equate to spatial infinity, meaning there's no, that you can never get close to God. It, it's always an infinity, if, a, a barrier of affinity between us. In other words, it does show how God is so much better and greater than us. But, but in context, what it's saying is that God will have mercy on us and he will treat us when we come to him, not like we would treat each other. In other words, in other words, if somebody was to wrong us, how would we react to them? Some of us have been holding grudges for years because somebody offended us. Some of us have been holding on to stuff and, and haven't forgiven people because we have, it's our human nature. And, and what it's saying is God is saying, my thoughts aren't your thoughts. How I treat people in the way that you treat each other. My ways aren't your ways. How, how you try to get back and be petty, that's not my ways. How, as high as the heavens are above the earth are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts your thoughts. Isn't that good news? Isn't, isn't that good news that God doesn't treat us the way we, would, we think we should be treated? That, that we would treat each other? Now, isn't it good news that he will freely pardon and he has mon- mercy abundantly? If, if you can't read this and get excited about who God is revealing himself to be to us, I don't know what can because there's many times where I've messed up and, and, and my human nature says I need to make up for what I messed up. And God is saying, you don't have to do that. I still love you. I love you unconditionally. There's nothing I can do to gain God's love. He loves me unconditionally. Some of us have been working to try and gain favor with God. And I'm here to tell you, you can't. I, I, I appreciate the, the, the spirit of new creation. That we have a, well, me and Sister Shayla were talking about, we have a, we have a Martha-type spirit. We're workers. But sometimes we need to be merry. And, 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 and enjoy the communion with God. And know that there's nothing we can do to gain God's love. I love the fact we love to work. I love the fact that we love to volunteer. But understand that there's nothing we can do to get God's love. Or his acceptance, because he's already given it to us. We have it freely. It says he freely pardons us. This this phrase, as high as as the heavens are above the earth, was used one other place in the Old Testament. And it's used in Psalms 103, 8, verse 3. I'm going to read 8 through 11 for context, but let me just read this for you. It says, the Lord is compassionate. And gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, So far has he removed our transgressions from us. Psalms 103 sheds light on on Isaiah 55. Because what it shows, it says that in Psalms, I mean, in Isaiah 55, it talks about how high his thoughts are above our thoughts. And his ways are above our ways. In Psalms 103, it talks about that his love is as high as the heavens are above the earth. See, his thoughts and our thoughts are different because of his love for us. In, in other words, he, he, he loves us unconditionally. He, we, we say this scripture and we quote it all the time. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world 
but but do we do we really believe it? In other words, God loves everyone. The 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 young man who was speeding down the road and hit the four year old kid, God loves him. The 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 pedophile who molested kids and 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 would rape young children. I I hate that person. I don't like them. They need to be under a jail. Matter of fact, I wouldn't even mind if they put them to death. But but God loves that person. God loves the murderer, the cheater, the, the, the killer. The, God loves those people. And only God can love the world. That's what it says. It says, as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our transgressions. See, some of us have this baggage of sin that we've messed up in our past and we keep carrying this baggage around. And, and God is saying, I love you and I've forgiven you. I've cast it into the sea of forgetfulness. I've cast it into, it says, as far as the east is from the west, as far as he removed our transgressions. The east and the west never meet. I, I, I don't know if you've ever seen a globe, but, but east and west can never meet. And, and, and because East and West can never meet, that's where our transgressions are. They, 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 they are cast away. God doesn't hold those against us anymore. What do we believe about God? What, what, what is it that we believe about God and how we think about God and how we, it, it's going to dictate how we act, how we live our lives. How we, how we live, because if we feel like we've got to make it up, we're going to keep thinking God is holding and is vengeful. And he's going to punish us every time we mess up. And we don't have this freedom to live our lives the way God has called us to. Yeah, we're going to mess up. But know that he's standing there loving. It's, look what verse, it says in Psalms 103, verse 8, it says, The Lord is compassionate and gracious. Slow to anger and abounding in love. Do we believe that? Do we believe that? Jumping back to Isaiah 55, verse 10, it says, As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. You, you might be familiar with what Isaiah said in chapter 40, verse 8. It says, the grass withers and the flowers fail, but the word of our God endures forever. Uh, uh, you know, new creation... You know why I preach the way I preach? You know, there's a lot of people that speak a whole lot better than me. They're more oratorically savvy and have all these great stories. And what I realized, I, Pastor Bray, I, I was spending so much time in my study trying to come up with ways to say things. And all I have to do is stand up here and share what the word of God says. That's all I, 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 I purposely just walk through it verse by verse because in the end of the day, it's not what I say. It's not my oratorical skills. But, but, but this verse 11 says, it says, my word goes forth out of my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what it, I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. God's word does the work. It doesn't matter how good or how, how well I speak if I run around here and shout to my ears fall off. I, it doesn't matter because it's God's word that we stand on. And it's God's word that helps us understand who God is. See, I don't care if you listen to me and, 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 and like the way I preach. I, I, I just want to explain the word of God. To the point where I hope each and every one of us understand it. Because the reason why is, is the word of God is the power. The Holy Spirit through the word of God, it, 
it, this, this is the word of God. I, I have a high view of the Bible. I've always had a high view of the Bible. My, my, my parents had a high view of the Bible, and, and they would teach the Bible, and it was, they would encourage memorization. And churches I grew up in encouraged scripture memorization. Because when you're going through things, you're not going to look for something. You're going to go to the word of God. The Holy Spirit is going to bring up a, a text in your mind that you read 20 years ago, and he's going to encourage your heart when you're going through hard times. It's the word of God that says that he will not, it will not return to him without accomplishing the purpose it was sent for. Look, look what it says in verse 10. It says, as the rain comes down and the snow comes down from heaven and does not return to without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. Don't miss that. Because look what it says. It says the word of God has both a right now effect and a future effect. It says it has, it yields seed for the sower. That's the future. But it also gives bread for the eater. That's the right now. God's word will bless you right now. And God's word is working in your life that it's affecting the future. It, it, it's giving us seed for the sower and bread for the eater. So as my word, it says, verse 11, goes out from my mouth, it will not return empty. God is working in each one of our lives. And sometimes we don't even know it, and we won't see it until after it has passed. And we look back, and we see how things were orchestrated in our life. I was sharing with John Bray yesterday how I got this new position. There was things going on out of my control. I didn't even know that there was some corporate politics going on, and, and that, that I, there was a chance I wasn't going. I was the most qualified, Pastor Miles. I, was, I, was, I scored the best on the interview. And the only reason I know that is because I have friends in, in HR that told me these things. But I wasn't going to get the job, Cassandra. They were going to pass me over and give it to somebody else. But God stepped in. And, 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 and I'm not saying that God, I, I, I know for a fact God was orchestrating the event to work out in my favor. But see, the thing is, we, 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 we got to stop thinking that God is only going to do things that blesses us because God has stepped in and orchestrated the events for things I did not get and I was not successful, and those were closed doors were blessings. I, I've received more blessing from closed doors than I have from the open ones. And we got to change the way we think about blessings because God is orchestrating these things in our lives. We just have to trust him. Why? Because as high as the heavens are above the earth is God's great love for us. He loves us unconditionally. He loves us without fail. He loves us. And because he loves us, because he loves us, we can come to him. So if, I, if you don't mind, I'd like to return to verse 1. It says, come to all who are thirsty. Matter of fact, I like how Jesus put it. I like how Jesus said it in Matthew 11. It says, come to me, all who are weary and heavy burdened, and what? I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I want to end the same way I began with this word come. You, you might be here this morning. You might be watching. And, and for any of you that, that know somebody who's struggling, you may want to share this video with them. Uh, they just need to come. You don't have to get your stuff right. You don't have to get anything and fix anything. Just come. If you're tired, just come. If you're weary, just come. If you messed up in the past, just come. Just come. 
Because when you come to him, you won't be the same when you leave. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day and thank you for all that you've done for us. Lord, we pray now that this word falls on good soil, that somebody who has been avoiding God because of how they view God, that God is, is vengeful. He, the sinners in the hands of an angry God has, has perpetuated their mind, and they think that God is just this angry being that's going to, looking for the opportunity to punish us. Let us, this word, fall on good soil. To help us understand as high as the heavens are above the earth is your love for us. We can't fathom. We can't even understand it because if we're truthful about it, we don't. We can only put those in words that we understand, and and, and it, the words that we understand don't do it justice. You love us unconditionally. You love us not because of what we do, just because of who you are. You love us. You love us with an unconditional love that should comfort us, should encourage us, should inspire us to do and live for you. But truth be told, we, we think more about your, your punishment and your wrath and your anger than we do about your love. So, Lord, we pray now that we would, we would work from your love, that we, we understand and, 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 and internalize your love for us. That we're not trying to gain your favor. We're not trying to gain your love because you love us no matter what. So, Lord, we pray now for those who may not have experienced your love, Pray now, Lord, that you will continue to seek after those. Cause them to run into closed doors and run through issues that will turn them to you. That's a hard prayer to pray for loved ones, Lord, but we pray that you are to a God that knows the end from the beginning. And know how everything's going to turn out. So, Lord, we pray that you will deal with those who are not saved. And let them see you and come to know you and come to you as they are. That you will transform their lives. And those, for those of us who are saved, Lord, help us to continue to just be reminded of the great love you have for us the great love that you continue to show us. Lord, we know that you chastise those whom we love, and we accept that, Lord, but it's because you love us. So, Lord, we pray now that you just make your love be even ever more present, that we can feel it even more. It's always there. But, Lord, help remove the blinders in our lives. Help remove the blinders that we, we don't even see how much you love us. We can't even experience it because of all of the distractions that, you, that have been placed in our lives. And, Lord, help us to remove those distractions and get back to the love that you have for us. Thank you, Lord. And now unto him who is able to keep us from falling. And present us faultless before his presence with exceeding great joy to the only wise God, our Father, be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and forevermore. Let the church stand and sing. Amen.